to do what he wanted to do was a physical impossibility while doing the mainstreaming uh, show and his main YouTube career. So he just basically got lazy at the end of the day. He saw that he made more money streaming, less money on the news. Why the fuck am I still doing that? So yeah. that's where it, it headed into. I had to try to save his fucking ass probably, and I'm not over-exaggerating here, probably five, six, seven times in a matter of, I'd say two, two and a half years where he was just ready to throw everything out the window. So instead of making this amount of money, he was okay with making this little bit amount of money talking on his live stream. So he would just get into these things. Oh, I'm not passionate about it. I said, so let's make content you're passionate about. So we made a Game Boy video that I produced. I wrote it. I edited it. I did everything for it. And at the end of the day, it goes up. It doesn't perform the way he wants right away. Guess what he does? Deletes it. You ruined it. He blames me that everything has fallen apart. I didn't. I was the one that tried to save your channel. And yes, yes for the record. Sorry, for the record, I did try to buy it off him as a joke. But also, I was half serious. Yeah, well, well I mean, to be fair, that's, I don't, under, see, here's, here's my thing. Because I said this earlier. Even if you did, not jokingly, was like, hey, man, let me continue RTU, and, like, I'll pay you some money, or I'll pay you a percentage until a certain date, royalties, and then I take over RTU from you, and then you handle the streams of, at your yeah. leisure. <laughs> like, what the hell's wrong with that? You're continuing the legacy. I'll tell you why. There, it, it hurts no one and he's like no i just don't want any. it's literally the uh well if i can't date you no one can and then you kill your ex-girlfriend yeah. well what it really is <laughs> what it really is dude is called jealousy because i have proof of this as well his daughter got sick i stepped up didn't even say a peep about it i didn't even ask him if i could do it to be honest with you he messaged me before anyone knew what was going on and said i have to step back before he could finish that sentence, I was already making videos for the main channel. I had streamed for him on his streaming channel. I didn't ask a single penny for that stuff. I just did it because we were friends. There was no, hey, uh, do you think you could throw me money to do this extra work? I'm not that type of guy. We were friends for fucking seven years at that point or whatever it was. His daughter, it's, it's the worst thing I've ever seen happen to a child. So I just stepped in took the channel from him and he just gave it to me at that point because what else is he going to do and everything i did while he was gone for that little bit of time was successful there was nothing i did that was not you know received from the audience in a successful way i made more money on the streams than he did and my views got just as much as he would have uploading his yeah, own Yeah, and i remember i remember watching the, I, that was one of the times where i would go to review tech and it was just you for like video after video after video and they were solid as hell and then the streams and i was like well this is good this is a good deal to still yeah. have your channel and then somebody's taking care of it so let me finish that uh, sentence though so here's the deal instead of being a smart businessman and saying i'm going to take advantage of jay's talents here and use him to my ability and essentially make money from him instead of all of the smart things you do as a businessman he took and we now know we now know why he does this because he's a fucking narcissist. He he decided to look at me like the enemy all of a sudden that I'm stepping on his toes, that I'm better than him, and it's jealousy now. So he's got to get rid of me. That's what really happened there. Let's get real. And yeah, well, it's it's. I guess it's because it maybe he want. Okay, look, here's how I see things, and people have different. They have different character traits. When I see my friends doing well, especially on YouTube, because I've encouraged a few of them to start doing YouTube, and a few of them did pretty well. When I see them doing well, it inspires me, and I love it. I'm like, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen. So when I saw you doing well, I saw your, I see your streams pop up all the time, and I go in and say hi. I'm like, dude, he's doing, he's doing fucking great. You know, he he broke off and started doing great, and that's cool. Um, and I love seeing people succeed. But there are people out there that fucking hate to see people succeed, especially people that they considered lesser, you know? Well, that's where the truth starts to come out, right? You start to see like the actual workings of this person. And if you look at what happened on today's stream, I don't need to reiterate it again, but the simple uh, you know, question I had for Rich was, hey, why did you, after everything I've done for you, treat me like shit at the end of the day? His answer was, and it's on my stream, I didn't give a fuck about the friendship. 
Wow. That's brutal, man. <laughs> that's, that's br- imagine hearing that after that that many years and like hitting a million together. That's wild. I couldn't even imagine. I mean, it's it's it shows his character. There's no denying it anymore. I've had to I've had to deal with people come, you know, because him and I split the audience, you know, like 75% of the audience stayed with him. I took 25%, right? That 75% believe that I am somehow the person that caused all of this to happen. Believe that I am the villain here, that I did all of this behind the scenes. If I did any of this, then I must be the most brilliant mastermind that's ever existed on YouTube ever, period. Somehow I planned all of the meltdowns, all of the mistresses, all of the fucking cheating scandals, all of the hacking, all of the everything. I planned it all, of course. That's yeah. what he wants people to believe, that I did it all. Are you kidding me? I wish yeah. I was that. If I was that smart, I'd be running YouTube. That's that's what I was saying on the my stream Monday is he thinks like Keem and Jay got together and they're like they're watching him from his bedroom oh, yeah. window and We're like doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, this is insane. Like, this is like weird, like psychosis. He thinks it's all you. It's all Jay. He's coming after me, man. Yeah. Um, uh, so obviously he decided that you didn't do enough work that last month. And he decided, even though you had previously agreed on a payment, he wasn't going to pay you the full amount. Right. hundred percent. But then after obvious pressure from you releasing that knowledge, he decides to pay you later, right? Yeah, I'll I'll give you I'll give you the story super quick. Okay. The reason why that thing was in place, whatever you want to call it, I call it a retainer. A retainer is essentially a contract. It can be written, it can be spoken, especially if you're friends with the person, and also especially if they they um, follow through with the retainer for a year. You don't expect at the end of the year for them to mysteriously go, "Hey, buddy, you're fired," but also. I'm not paying you. Like you just don't expect that to ever happen, right? Because you're friends with the person. So what happened was Rich tried to let me go, quote unquote. He says, I begged him to come back, which is not true. I begged him to keep his channel alive so he could put food on the table for his family. That's a different story that he's trying to put out there. Like I begged him. Were there months that I definitely said, hey, dude, just pay me less because the money goes down? Absolutely. Years ago. It would go down in, uh, you know, summertime. So he'd be like, I can only do this or I can't do that. Can you do cheaper? Or I'd say, hey, I'll do it for 1700 for the month. He'd be like, deal. I don't know how that was begging. But I would beg him to fucking think straight because he was always yeah. on the edge of like, I hate this. I don't want to do this. He's always like up and down, up and down, up and down. So I have to deal with that for six years with working with him. But in terms of the timeline, he decides to randomly fire me uh, like a couple summers ago without telling people it might be out there a little bit, but then rehired me instantly because it's flip flop USA. Of course he's having a bipolar moment. So he's brought me back in. So I say, dude, the only way I'm going to work with you from this point forward is if you agree to a retainer, this means that if we do two seconds of a video in a month and we start on that first, you owe me for the whole month for the amount we agree upon. Guess right. what? He did that for a year straight. Not a peep, not a peep out of him. He loved it because he had me on retainer. I worked 24 seven. He could call me at three in the morning if you wanted. So I said, great, because I'm waiting on you constantly and you keep fucking up. And he said, I agree. We'll do it. So there's a retainer in place. I don't remember the total amount for the last month. Here's the deal, though. If he ever wanted to change the retainer or change some of the wording in it or whatever, he would tell me the month before. He'd say, dude, this month coming up, like, we got to do this. Or he'd be like, hey, dude, we're doing more next month. Here's more money. Cool. Thank you for being honest with me. I appreciate that. So at the end of the day, long story short, I get a phone call. Actually, I didn't even get a phone call. I just get a fucking video on YouTube saying I quit. Then I get a phone call from him and I'm like, I already accepted it. I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's it, man. And he's like, yep. So he's like, how much do I owe you? So I told him the amount. He owed me the retainer because we were like 14 days into the month. Plus he owed me the streaming money because I was streaming for him. Right. I tell him the total amount. He goes, we have a problem here. And I instantly thought in my head, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me at this point? What's the problem? Well, we only work 14 days. Oh my God, here we go. So without hesitation, 
I'm not putting up with his shit. He's not taking money out of my pocket, especially we have an agreement that's last years. Just because you're bipolar doesn't mean that you can walk on people in your business relationship. So the simple thing I did was I told him, you need to pay me what is owed. He said, I'm not paying you it. And he paid me a certain amount, which was about maybe $1,400 less than it should have been. And he was like, that's it, man. So I went, okay. I said, and I'll be open about this. I said, let's see how the fan base feels on how you're treating me in this little divorce. And I went on Twitter and I said, Rich is trying to fuck me over for money because that's what he was doing. Right. So he sees that as me backstabbing him, which makes no sense whatsoever. If I worked at McDonald's and they held back my last check, I went on Facebook and said, McDonald's has my money. They won't give it to me. Am I backstabbing McDonald's? No. Well, the backstab already occurred when he decided to not pay you the full retainer. Exactly. So yeah. he he started this. So all of a sudden, though, Camelot, he paid me the money and he fucking apologized. So everything's great, dude. I'm going to go off and stream on my own. He's going to give me a shout out. We're going to stream together. Guess what, dude? Everything's a mess behind the scenes. But in front of the camera, everything's been figured out. Everything's great. Get this, though. A day later on Facebook, what happens? He has a meltdown about me, talks shit about me. Here we go again. I didn't start that again. He started it again, just like he did a couple days ago, he can't help himself. And I'll tell you why. It's called money. Every fucking time he opens his mouth about me, like a thousand more people show up on his stream. Even on my stream, people show up. I'm not going to yeah. deny that. I had, a, I had fucking 1,500 people watching me today because I'm talking about Rich. It's money, money, money. And that's because he based his whole career on drama. So when you ask me about the Phil thing, people are asking me like, oh, Phil is like fucking nonstop on RT because they watch it. He gets paid money to watch Phil. That's it. There's no other answer to it. If you didn't give him super chats to watch Phil, he'd watch something else. Yep. Why do you think yep. he's coming back on November 5th? Yeah, that's for damn sure. And the, the one of the things that I find really strange about this um, is the fact that He's like, okay, just, you know, Jay only cares about money or Becky Boo only cares about money and mm. all this and this. And then he com he says he deletes his channel because it only makes $600 a month. Mm. Sure. And I'm like, but it sounds like you're the one that cares about this. And to touch on this a little bit, so I've, you know, I've went through all the DMs, like the countless DMs uh, about <laughs> the situation with the $600 and why he deleted his channel. Yes. So I went through the actual DMs and the people, the person involved, is quite literally like, I think this is a bad decision. I think, you know, that's a very large channel. You need to pivot and, like, consider keeping it and figure out another plan. But don't just delete it because that's a rash decision. I think that's a bad idea. Yes. And he responds with, well, it only made $600. My streaming channel makes more, so there's no point in having it anymore. And it, it makes me just feel like a failure every time I see it. And, you know... To well, be you, completely, you are a failure, but yes, to be completely fair to Rich, if he told people this with no like drama behind it, it's with you know the people involved, people will be like, okay, that's weird, but you know, they could probably swallow it after a while. Yep. The issue is, is he's claiming that these people involved were saying they wanted him to keep his channel and wanted to steal it from him and steal all his money. And I'm yeah. like, none of this has ever been verbalized by anybody, they're all encouraging him to you know, take care of himself. They're all encouraging him to succeed or just wait and see what you can do. Don't throw it all away for no reason. They're literally, it sounds like they're talking to a family member. Like you need to like take care of yourself and make sure everything's all right. And then he goes on stream claiming that you and other people were wanting to steal his channel and wanted his money. And I'm like, where is he? Is he materializing this in his brain? Like what's happening? Well, we could talk about the time that uh, after he threw my name in the mud over and over and over and over and over for the last eight months, we could talk about the time that I finally snapped and phoned him. He's dropping his kids off at school. So he said, you know what? I'll phone you back. So I said, cool. He phones me back. I tell him directly to his face, people care about him. This is after he melted down and called me every name in the book. I gave him a chance. I gave him a chance. I said to him, dude, if you want to split the business part of 
you know, away for a second. You fucked me. That's great. I don't even care now. You paid me. We're over it. But this nonstop harassment of me has to stop. People care about you. People fucking care about you. And you know what he did? He fucking broke down. Oh, I won't give the super details, but he broke down in his car saying how hard his life was and people couldn't understand him. So I said, you're going to get help. Yes, I'm going to get help. He broke down. I thought we were making a leeway here. Like, okay, this is a new path, dude. People fucking care about you. You could turn yeah. it around. Guess what he did two days later? After fucking crying in front of me, goes back on his Facebook, talks more shit about me again. For no reason. After I have a fucking heart to heart where we both get emotional about the situation. And I tell him like, dude, I love you. I don't care about what has happened. He fucking tells me the same thing. Two days later, this narcissist goes back on his fucking word on Facebook and talks more shit about me. That's the type of person we're dealing with. We went to the fucking depths of our hearts and three days later, he's got a knife in mine again for no reason. I didn't even say a peep to him in that time. Yeah. So that's another example of what you're dealing with when you watch this person or you support this person. That's the type of person you're fucking supporting. Yeah. And I started to get that. I started to get those vibes, man. I've started to get those vibes because I'm, I'm, I mean, he's called me like a right wing grifter now um, because I, I don't even remember. It's pr probably something dumb. Like, Oh yeah. I'll tell you what it was because you got close to Melanie. Oh, I did have her. Oh yeah. I had her on my show a couple of times. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to lie here. Like I think Melanie is not a great person, but that's just my opinion. Um, you know, my opinions about her is already out there. I think she's just using things to make money, but that's th who gives a shit about her. If yeah. you're friends with her, no, you know, it is what it is. I don't care. Um, but he got, yeah, he was like, yeah, Camelot's going down this path. And I'm like, okay. Like, I, I think he just had her on the show. I don't think it was like major, but Rich saw that as an opportunity, to be honest. He was like, oh, another person we could eventually kind of bury. You know what I mean? Try yeah. to bury. Now, I don't think he ever went after you directly. No, I mean, but, I, I, brought, I think I brought him on my show after, and we had a cordial conversation for two hours, and it was fun. <laughs> uh, you know, it's... So well, he's, gonna, a, he's afraid of you, for sure. I don't even know why. I'm a dumbass mustache man. I, I think he's afraid of you. That's my opinion on that. You know, I talk to him about all sorts of things, but that definitely is one. Like, he, he didn't want to step on your toes, but he would, you know in terms of the whole right wing grifting thing and people could talk, you know, free speech, man, free speech. The problem with rich is that he can say whatever he wants, but the moment somebody says something he doesn't agree with, it's no longer a back and forth. It's an attack. Yeah. That's how he's always worked. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's okay. so that's how he lives his whole life though. So look at the whole quantum TV thing. He had to he had to put his balls between his legs because Quantum came out and basically almost took his channel down. And behind the scenes, it was like, hey, it's time to shut the fuck up about this person because he's now going to take the channel down. And it was like, I'm going to delete it. And he was like, I, he was hemming and hawing about those videos. I'm like, dude, just delete it and move on. Like, we've gone too far with the situation. So I delete, I, he's like, yeah, okay, delete them all. So I deleted all of the quantum TV videos because it was getting out of hand. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is he takes things, not from the point where it should end, past it into like outer space, way past it. And it's like, dude, it's over. Why are you over there now? It's over. He's, he's obsessed with things. And again, here's my prime example, Phil. Why is he just streaming about Phil nonstop? Yeah, take, I don't take get a wild it. guess because people are now giving him money for that, right? Yeah, that's it. If all of a sudden Phil's like you know essence dried up and people didn't give a shit and they weren't super chatting to, about Phil, he'd be on to somebody else like it was nothing. He doesn't care about the people whatsoever, dude. The guy doesn't care about himself. Let's just be honest here. Yeah, I mean a good a good point to attest to that is there are people that genuinely enjoys content and supported him probably for a decade and he deletes his channel without a second thought about these people that still support him like look dude i 
there are streams where I get 250 people because I'm playing like a game and I am the happiest damn person. I love it. I'm so glad that people continue to show up. doesn't matter, you know, how it goes. And sometimes I'm down and sometimes I'm up, but it just yeah. depends. But it seems like he's like, well, if I don't get, if I'm only getting 10,000 views per video, I'm just going to delete the whole channel. I don't care about any of these people who support me. They can fuck off. Uh, I just yeah. want money the easiest way possible. And I don't know, man. It just seems it's just it, it makes it to where people can't trust you, especially all the stuff you're saying about this situation with Becky Boo and whatnot. Well, that that right there is a whole other can of worms, man. Like I I literally, you know, he's saying that I went back in DMs and stuff. He forgets that I was there for all of it, all the dating, all the women, all the everything. Do I have all those DMs? No, I deleted it all, to be honest with everybody out there. However, somebody was kind enough to send me one very important DM that basically proves what I'm saying about that, that it wasn't just Betty or whatever, Becky. So it he's, he's absolutely insane. Like today on stream, he's like, show me proof that I did a call to action to get you hacked. I'm like, okay, I have the video evidence. It's all over Twitter right now. What comes of that now? Like what happens? We send it to him and go, there's the proof. Is he going to apologize to us? No, he will. He will say, oh, well, actually, what I meant is this, even though I said these things I actually meant like it was a joke. And I was just, you know, and you're just you're just too soft, Jay. That's what it is. Well, I think, say. I, I think that uh, the softness has worn off yeah. <laughs> after, after <laughs> today. Yeah. And that's the thing, man, you bring you bring up the Becky Boo situation and say well, you have concrete proof that there's, you know, other women Um, in 2019, 2020, one of my like most supportive mods like got really active on Twitter. She's obviously a female. And can I take a guess? I don't know. Maybe. Did, did Rich come into the DMS? Yes. So, Oh my God, wait, wait. So you're just like, sorry, I don't mean to steal your thunder, but hang on a second. I, I also, I hate to say this, but I also had access to his Twitter account because he gave it to me because he was also lazy over there. So I would randomly be in his account and what is going on in here? Uh, some weird uh, message from a girl? What is this? Oh, no. and, it, and it's just them. But dude, nothing weird. Just like another girl going, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm glad you're doing better. Then another girl. How are you? I'm glad you're doing better. Then another girl. I'm glad you're doing better. So dude, go ahead and explain what happened with your mod. Yeah, so <laughs> that it seems he seems like this guy, man. I'm telling you. So... I thought this was the craziest shit. So I was in Las Vegas. I was oh, here getting, we go. I, was, I think this is a bit of a nuke. I was in Las Vegas and I had a like I, I think 15 of my mods I flew out. And I by, by me saying I flew them out, I'm pretty sure I did not fly them out. I'm pretty sure they paid for it. I don't remember. I'm I'm stingy, maybe not. But um I did buy some some food for them. For that so that's definitely happened. It was at a fancy fa uh, French restaurant. But at any rate, so I'm in Vegas. And one of my biggest mods, and this is after me and Rich have done a couple shows. Here she tells go. me she tells me that Rich DM'd her and was talking back and forth to her and said that he wanted her to fly out and move in with him. And I was like, what the fuck? And she's like, yeah, I just started talking to him and he's saying this shit. <laughs> like, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I remember thinking at the time, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. And then I didn't really, she kind of like dropped off and you know, kind of went on her own way. And that, is there, is there proof of that existing? Oh, well, it was, it was a verbal conversation at, in Vegas. I, no, no, I, no, I mean, no, no proof of the DMS of him saying that. Oh, probably. Uh, that's what I was saying uh, when I was talking earlier. I was like, if, if she heard this was going on, she would probably come out and start talking about it. Um, but I haven't talked to her. I don't even, I don't, she changes her social media name like every two years and I can, can never follow it. I could probably find out, but, um, Hey, yeah. you know what? Maybe you should, because what you're getting at there is a bit of a nuke. That's not the first time I saw that happen. And that's also not the first time a woman approached me saying Rich has been messaging her. Yeah, but he's does he always ask him to move in with him? I it is must be some done? weird fucking kink he has where he, like he moves in with them for 10 years and then doesn't even kiss them or something. <laughs> It must be a kink. And then he just like goes upstairs and slaps it or something. I don't know what it. Well, Dude. Becky said he was into, into humiliation. 
kinks. Well, it explains why his career is just the way it is because it's the most humiliating thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, it's the, this makes so much. He's getting off on this. That's what it is. He blew the fattest load when he hit delete. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, I think we yes. broke down what's happened here. Damn, Rich. This right whole now time. he's like, oh yeah, I got in another meltdown. Ah. <laughs> Everybody hates my dumbass. No, um. So yeah, that's the that's kind of the my my you know, experience on that. And I've never really thought about it until two days ago when I watched that stream on lock. I was like, holy shit. I know something like this has happened in my community with rich. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I was hearing it. I was like, this is the same story. See, this, this, let me just say this domain. Who's a fan of mine and yours. I'm assuming. Cause he's here. He says, sorry, but I wish this stuff with rich was over and Jay would just ignore it. Finally. It's getting so old. What people don't understand is that you guys didn't have to live through it. I had to live through it for eight months straight. I had people go into my bank account and send money to random emails because of this person. It's not just the internet, guys. I had to deal with people calling my doctor's office saying that I was going to go to my doctor's office and steal medications because I was a drug lord or a druggie. I had to deal with people. I couldn't even get a prescription because of that. I had to go and figure all this fucking technical stuff out on one side with the computer. And then I had to go to the bank and literally make a report that people had went into my account and gave money to some email, which we could never figure out where that went. Yeah. And, uh, and just, people are telling me, oh, just stop, Jay. This is it's getting old. Listen, when people go into your personal fucking iCloud account and see personal photos, tell me it's getting old for you. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, isn't there a, uh, an allegation where Rich allegedly paid people to go after people? Uh, yes, there is. And I wasn't around at the time for that, but I know exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, it's not rocket science, guys. It's not also some sort of plot against Rich. If things start adding up, the simplest answer is always the answer. Rich treated uh, Big Cheese like shit. Rich treated all these other fucking YouTubers like shit and had all these beefs. And you're telling me to relax? He fucked me more than all of them. He put a call. Guys, he put a fucking call to action to get people to hack me and find dirt on me while also putting my IP address on his live stream. Do you think that was a mistake? Do you no. think he's that stupid? Why would your IP be on his screen? Because he's so dumb. He put it on the, the back screen in one of the videos. And that's because he wanted people to know my IP address here so they could get into the information. Oh, my God. Yeah, welcome to the real world. People don't realize this. I have never talked about it, but dumbass put my IP on his background around the exact same time he told people to go find dirt on me by whatever means he said. That's, dude, that's... See, when I heard him say that, I thought... He was sharing his screen and accidentally clicked a tab that had your IP on it. He yeah. he put it as his background on his computer. Oh, drama alerts here. Yes, just so we're clear again. Oh my god. Captain Meltdown had a live stream on his channel that had my fucking IP address on the screen while he did a call to action on his Discord for people to go out there and find quote unquote any dirt on me. And then guess what happened? My computer got hacked and then around your, the same fucking timeline. And your bank account was drained, right? Oh, man. Not just that. I haven't talked about the whole scenario evolving around that. But the, the one thing that bothered, bothered me the most was the bank account. Because how it's... Dude, just imagine waking up and you look and there's an e-transfer for like... I don't know. It's not much. 70 bucks to somebody you've never heard of. You're instantly, you're going to go, what the fuck is this? Yep. So you start looking. There's another one. There's oh, another no. one. There's oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> so now I'm like, what the fuck? So I jump out of bed panicking. My heart's like racing. And I go to the, I go directly to, oh, no. First, I phone my police officer, best friend, who told me what to do. And I, he's like, there's not much you can do because it's not under, it's under a certain amount of money. He's like, even going to the police right now is fucking pointless because it's not like $600. It's not even $500. It's not enough for the police to even show up to your house. You know, he's been a cop for 20 years, so I'm going to listen to him. 
go to the bank, loss prevention, blah, blah, blah. So I end up going doing that. Then guess what? I find out that somebody has called my doctor's office and the place that I get my prescription medicine and um, a fucking pizza place in town. All of these fucking phone calls are happening now around where I'm living. One's two cents and I, uh, I don't know if he's here right now. We're like, we're watching it happen. We're like, what's next? Oh, I can't go get my prescription drugs now because they think I'm a druggie. Great. Oh, I can't get to my doctor's office because, and I don't want to use the words here, but somebody phoned and said that I was going to show up there with a pew pew and kill. Oh my God. Yeah. And it, okay. So, let's, and let me, let me uh, cut this real quick. Yeah. Cause I want people to hear the call to arms. So what people don't, don't probably yeah. realize is what Jay is saying. And I mean, obviously if it was on a stream. There's proof. I know Rich, I have, I have it right here. Rich put Jay's IP address as his background of his computer at the same time, around the same time where he did, where he did this. Oh, you got it. Whoever has stuff on any of these assholes, if you don't mind, no one is required to do anything. It'll just be appreciated. By all means, post it here. You could DM it to me if you're not comfortable. I understand that as well. Um, I'm not holding back anymore. The ship is sinking, and man, I'm going to stir up everything while it's sinking. <laughs> and then your IP is on his background of his computer, and you're everything you own gets hacked including your your doctor's office prescription meds your bank account i mean well are we supposed to expect that this is like a random occurrence coincidentally at the exact same time that's what i'm saying he's he's, <laughs> playing, he's playing stupid like he had nothing to do what happened oh my god what happened so let me also put this out there somebody in the chat said oh your doctor's office wouldn't say you're a patient Dude, that's not what happened. They had my full name. So they just called the doctor's office, said, hey, your patient's going to do this. It wasn't like they called my doctor directly. They just left a message with them. So I get a message from the police, which, by the way, I went to the police and made a report because all of a sudden, all these places, the pizza place, all of this stuff is happening all at once. So he's like, you got to go make a report. So guess what? That's what happened. Now, is anything going to come of any of that stuff? No. Because nothing really happened in terms of me being able to prove it was rich. It's impossible. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'll say this, though. I had the computer looked at, and I don't know if you know about this, um, Camelot, but uh, I'm in the middle of streaming a few times. My PayPal somehow becomes detached from my Streamlabs. Middle of stream. Middle of stream. Okay. That's fucking weird. Doesn't happen once, doesn't happen twice, doesn't happen three times, happens four times as I'm streaming. Now, at the same time, I'm going to tell you this story. Somebody comes into the chat known as Michelle So Gucci. Around the same time, my computer's being weird. I'm in the middle of movie night on my Discord. Disconnects randomly. Never happened before. Just gone. I'm in the middle of streaming. My PayPal goes down. My Streamlabs goes down. My alert system goes down. And at the same time, guess which motherfucker shows up on my stream under a different name? Rich. Comes on my stream and donates under Michelle So Gucci. Are you kidding? You're He's so stupid. Did he accidentally donate under that name? Oh, no. He donated another name to hide it. And then once we started to sniff it out a little bit, he just flat out used his whole name and his email. In like, so he did super chats under Michelle Soguchi, maybe about 20 bucks worth. And then as we were going, he gave up and just started using his actual email and he started tipping me in PayPal, which showed me his fucking email. So I'm like, in the middle of the stream, I didn't want to bring him up again, dude. So if you go back to that stream, which ones probably has on record there, you see me going, oh God, oh God. I don't say it's rich on that stream. I just go, oh God, you guys won't believe who that is. And people are like, it's rich, it's rich. I don't I don't even confirm on that stream because I didn't want the drama. So why exactly was he was he tipping you on PayPal? Or was it just because he was or somebody was removing your PayPal or whatever? No, well, that's the good question, buddy. Just like when he put the call to arms, hey, somebody go get dirt, I get hacked. I my PayPal's being hacked on my computer while I'm streaming. He shows up in the stream. 
Are you kidding me? It's too close to each other. Yeah. So we have all receipts, by the way. Ones and I have literally every moment that has happened over the last eight months. That's wild, man. That's wild. And then, and this is only the beginning. And then it comes out that, you know, he's talking, or he talked to this girl for 10 years and he was telling you that he was, you know, having sex with her. And then it comes out that he never had sex with her in 10 years. So I'll be brutal. Well, (laughs) but dude, again, like I saw in his Twitter DMs, all these girls and they weren't fucking bots. He, he does this thing where he just talks to a girl and the, I didn't read anything weird. And guess what? I also didn't go through the DMs and went, oh, I would go on to uh, do a post because that's why I had it. Because he was, this is honestly what happened. He'd have a meltdown. So I said, give me your Twitter. You're done. He'd give me it and he'd have no access to it. So I'd handle it. I put the videos up on uh, his channel. Then I put it up on Twitter. So he just... I guess had these conversations with women, it was not bad, but I'd be on his Twitter posting the video and like a, a message would come in and the DM in the corner, you know, how it pops up. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay. And it, I'd click it and it would just be like a bunch of them. And I was and like, this, and, th- and this was all just, Oh, and you know what? It was nothing weird. I'll say that it wasn't like he was like fucking like, Hey, I moved down here with me. But what's funny is that you, have somebody who he DM'd and said, move down with me. He also said that to Becky, move down here with me. What the fuck? Move? Maybe they had to be hot enough. No. Um, what? So did, did, I mean, you didn't go through the DMS, but he probably, no. it's possible to assume that he asked these girls to message him on a different app. That wasn't Twitter, right? Well, I saw one DM out of the total of them. I, you, you know how you could see like the couple of lines of stuff. Yeah. So basically, people would send stories to his Twitter. So I would be checking the stories. Hey, Rich, somebody sent this shit or somebody sent that like a business does. And every once in a while, there'd be like a boom, like a a girl's name. And it would just be like, oh, I'm doing good. How are you? So he'd be in there talking. And it wasn't, the thing was, it wasn't just like one girl. It was like, whoa. (laughs) But he didn't, guys, he didn't do anything wrong. I'm just being honest here. But the problem is now that, Camelot has a girl that he said move in down there. We've got somebody else in the chat uh, saying Becky was also, you know, promised to move down there with him. And then I have, I have evidence that is so ridiculous that says flat out that he was talking to a bunch of women right here on my phone. If you put everything together, my question is, what the fuck was he doing? What the fuck was he doing? Yes. And and listen, the only reason I bring any of this up is because of how he treated Becky the other night, calling her a slut, a whore, all that stuff on his stream. Are you, you're, you think you're going to get away with treating a woman like that? I don't think so, buddy. Who else have you done this to? If you could do this to one, you could do it to many. And guess what? I know there's many. Camelot knows of one. Where is the wood going to start opening? And all the women start coming out going, yeah, he messaged me too. Yep. Yep. And the thing is, you know, just from the DMs I've read, it looks like Rich was promising to like financially support some of these people. It's like, oh, if you, you know, if you, basically insinuating be with me and I'll financially support you. And that's why they're upset about the channel being deleted. It's like, well, what the fuck are you going to do now, motherfucker? Well, that's what, what Becky was upset about. You can't delete well, the channel. That's supposed to be how you like support me. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, well, he was apparently never even interested, blah, 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 and Grizzly, all this Grizzly stuff. and Chad, I love you, buddy. So it's just a, it's, it's just a wild-ass situation, and I I can't fathom the move to do political streaming. I just can't <laughs> fathom that. That is like the mo- that most ass-backwards thing. Hey, this guy, are you kidding me? He's going to do political streaming? He could barely walk down the stairs without breaking his legs because of gout. <laughs> gout? Well, that's a, that's a bit of a joke, but like King of the no. Hill, <laughs> yeah, no, but he actually he one time got out of the studio and stepped down and broke his legs. Basically, that's that's Jeez. a true story. Poor Rich. But, you no, know, uh, joking <laughs> aside, are you ki- like this is what I'm getting at? Rich just goes where the easy money is. 
hey, Rich, how about you do something challenging for a change? How about you do something that isn't just talking into the camera, knowing that it's going to split the audience and half are going to give you money and half aren't? It's just so easy. It's the exact people you used to make fun of, you've become, and it's pathetic. Yep, it is. It, it It's crazy to me, too, because <clears throat> if we assumed that the allegations of like all this really weird harassment behind the scenes is true, there was a guy doing that to Rich for the longest time. And he was, you know, obviously he didn't enjoy that. And then immediately it's, you know, where it's, it could be possible he was doing that to other people. I'm like, that's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing to me. It's like, you felt, you felt that this end of this, and then you immediately want to do it to somebody else, especially somebody really close to you. That's weird to me. I dude, I want you to think about this for a second. He talked to this girl for 10 years. Okay. That doesn't mean it was constant. So let's get that out of the way. However, I do have a voice recording of him saying that he's had a crush on her since she was young. Like, yeah, not young, but younger into the relationship. My question is, as he can treat somebody like this after she wanted to help him, he could treat me like this. Oh, you guys want to hear it? Um, oh, I have it. Oh, you got it. Cool. Play that. I got it right, got it right here. Here we go. Um... It's it. We're gonna have to see Keem's goofy ass face, but we're gonna play it. <laughs> you just see Keem sitting there. It's funny. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. I words for rich. One minute, I'm reading something. Also, I think somebody told me Keem was drunk tonight, and that's. Yeah, uh, but it was like shots for TTS or TT. Okay. Texas, yeah, Texas I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't go on then. <laughs> he oh, called man. me autistic, though, which like, is funny. You need to th like this is literally true. I've found you extremely attractive since 2008 when I first met you on POF. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yep. When he said he first met you and like, it's just a lot of conflicting information. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, at the end of the day here, if there's smoke, there's a, you know, it, sorry, if there's smoke, there's a fire somewhere. And the fact that you just said on stream, listen, I'll ask you this. Did we talk about this beforehand? No, no. So for you to come to me while we're streaming and saying, well, actually, I got a girl that, you know, he slipped in the DMs of. I've also seen all these girls. We've got a girl going on Keemstar's show. Are you so rich? What happened? You somehow juggled all of these different women while you were navigating your relationship with your ex? So who are we supposed to believe now? The guy who tried to throw everyone under the bus? Because we simply wanted him to get help, or do we just believe you? Like, yeah. are, like, are we just gonna believe you on this? Yeah, it just you when when stuff starts lining up and there's so many th things that you can debunk, you stop really taking somebody's you know taking the benefit of the doubt or giving somebody the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. The best know? part is that the best part is he asked to kiss her and he didn't get anywhere in ten years. Oh, right. that, that makes God. it worse. Like if you only have two or three shots, you fucking you make sure you focus. What do you mean? No. And and the way he <laughs> talked to me, man, the way he would talk to me, like, oh, I'm talking to these women back in the day. Oh, these women, this and that. You know, he'd send me photos of some of them and like, hey, look, I'm talking to this girl here. I'd send him photos of the girls I was talking to. You know what dudes do? Like, yeah. hey, I'm talking to this girl. She's cute. It's going well. Uh, blah blah blah. The usual shit that guys do. He would act like he was banging everybody. <laughs> but now we now we know now we know that uh that he fucking can't even lean in for a kiss without asking for permission. That's oh, oh my god. Oh lady. No, that see this is my theory and it's only because I've seen other creators do it is I I feel like Rich probably would leverage his YouTube following like oh look I have a million subs and reach out to women and talk to them and be like oh i have a million so yeah i'm on youtube i'm a million subs here's my because they can just you can two clicks and you can find out who you're talking to you know, you know you, that's a good point man you're probably right about that yeah i mean mm -hmm. how else is he going to impress anybody i mean he was making a lot of money when we were at the top dude uh bull channels going um without giving a figure i'll tell you in private later but it was 
a lot. Yeah, and, you know, to, to show somebody that's probably powerful, you know, it's like, hey, I've got this and this. Did he do that? I don't know. I'm just that's just a thought. Allegedly, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I've seen I've seen it's always suspiciously like very large bald men and they that leverage their following. <coughs> I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not saying he did, he did that. I'm just saying that if he's talking to all these girls, there has to be a reason. Well, like they had to message back for some reason. Listen to this. I so this is what I love about this whole story. Becky was kind of the nuke. You know, I said like there's a nuke out there, and if she comes forward, it's going to be over. Like people are going to be really sick of this guy if it comes out. So I said, I know the nuke. There's a nuke. Little did I know that I don't know how this, I guess Becky or he said stuff back in the day or something. So I start to hear that other people have the nuke and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I mentioned it on my stream and guess what happens? The nuke literally messages me the next day. I didn't reach out to her. I didn't go through DMs to say, what was her name? I forgot what the girl's name was. She reached out to me and I showed it on stream today or I showed it to him. Paragraph after paragraph. Hey, I want to help Rich. I feel bad, blah, 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 blah. Guess what ends up happening? I talked to her for like four hours over audio. She told me everything. Everything. Even more than was uh, on Law Cow. Everything. Of all the stories. And like, there's some stuff in there that if it got out, it'd be even worse. Oh my God. It's like, unbel <laughs> it just keeps getting worse for this loser. And I'm Jesus. like, okay, well, like... If this story drops, uh, Becky, and you don't have your name out there, and I know, and or you come out, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. If this story drops and you have your name out there already and you could get your story ahead of this, then basically that's going to steal the thunder from all of it. So that's what you would, as a YouTuber, that's what I would want done. Yeah. So she's like, what should I do? I go, I don't know. I'm not doing it on my show. You do whatever you want. So she goes off finds Keemstar because they have a history, goes on Keemstar show. And what does Rich do? The first thing he says is that I did it all. Even if I, listen, even if I told her, go to Keemstar and here's Keemstar, I still didn't make her stand up and phone him and he picks up the phone. It has nothing to do with me. She contacted me, a jackass. Like, nope. it's unbelievable that he's still blaming me for this sh shit years later. So... At the end of the day, man, how much longer are we going to give this guy a shot, a shot, a shot, a shot? Like, I, I, he's shown his true colors over and over and over and over and over with everybody. If yep. you're still supporting him, I think that's lunacy. I'm, and like I said earlier, I am, dude, I have, I've been, I, you know, I understand being friends with creators can get pretty spicy sometimes. And I've been through a lot of weird situations and I'm still friends with a lot of these people because, you know, I don't immediately discount people. It's not something I do. And well, it's I'm also at, part of the game, right? Yeah. And I'm at that point with Rich where I'm like, I just, that's why I'm streaming about this. I'm like, I can't defend this guy anymore. Oh, well, I got news for you, buddy. Uh, the next meltdown, you're going to be a two faced, right winging piece of shit garbage who was <laughs> never his friend, instantly jumped on the bandwagon, piece of shit, all this. Stuff. So that's what's going to happen there. Yeah, the somebody in chat uh, the other day said he was complaining about me in Discord, and I'm like, ah, well, you can't. Oh, really here we go. Here we go. Yeah. You can't really control it, and then uh, you know, I don't hate Rich. I don't. It's just it's watching this all play out is, you know, pretty eye opening. And then there's just too many things now. Too you you, you got to stop giving somebody a benefit of the doubt eventually. You know. So Rich asked somebody to make a view, uh, like a VTuber skin for them. And I guess the guy's working on it, but I'm hearing now Rich is not going to pay the guy and he's ignoring him, uh, which is which is also not the first time. Let's talk about the time that Rich paid somebody, paid, quote unquote, to make a Doom clone with Phil's face in it. Guess what? That guy never got paid. <laughs> Damn. You see, eventually... See, this is the so here's my here's my um my advice to anybody. If you have a longtime editor, longtime friend, longtime business partner, don't fuck them over, man. Because then Jake would be like, you know what? Fuck this guy. 